Alrighty, welcome to our 2029 shareholder meeting for uh, the Whitney Houston firm. My name is JP, I'm the CEO, and I'm going to give a brief intro to our team, how we've done over the last 10 years, and then hand it off to Griffin. So the team uh, for Whitney Houston is a very seasoned firm. We've experienced both gain and loss, which means we know how to handle the defeat, we know how to defeat the defeat, we know how to get back on the high horse and keep riding. One of the things that we excelled at once we bought uh, Team Fire Orange was communication. At first we started a little rocky, but then we started meeting more regularly. We developed a relationship. And we helped each other make decisions regarding finances, uh, marketing, manufacturing, etc. This led to us both increasing our shareholder value and then buying Kerbert Zella. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But overall, we feel that further investment in our firm will help to drive this growth that we've been producing and continue and will continue to produce and eventually become a leading competitor in the market, eventually taking over both Team Turquoise and Team AHA, given the amount of time. I'll hand it off to Griffin now. Hey guys, my name is Griffin Bartels. I'm the CEO of the Whitney Houstons. Uh, some things I want to talk about is just our 10 years, what we did, just a kind of an overview of everything. So start off, we had a great start. We felt really confident. We felt like we knew exactly what we were doing, and we saw a lot of growth. We saw a lot of growth so much that we decided to buy a Team Fire Orange. Team Fire Orange at first was a little upset with us buying them due to a lack of communication, but in business that was a learning experience for us. Through that experience, that kind of helped us um, form a great bond with them, which allowed us to start moving up. However, the past couple years, we, did, we got a little ahead of ourselves, started spending a little too much money, and uh, we tried buying out Kiebert Zilla. We were successful in buying them out, and that required a lot of money on our part, which resulted in us falling a little bit. But um, throughout this, you'll see how we are going to respond. Uh, so here's our financial statements. Uh, as you can see, we had $48 million of sales revenue, and we had finished our 10th year with a shareholder value of 86.29, and we had a net profit of $2 million. $94,000. Yeah, $2,094,000. Uh, here's our cash flow activities. So we had, in year 2028, we had $48,804,000 uh, sales. However, you can see it, the red number, big red numbers there, the negatives. Um, that has to do with us uh, giving the loan to Team Firearms to purchase Keeperzilla, which was a downfall, but we are starting to see Um, I'm Sophie. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about our past operations and um, some things that we want to change moving forward. So I think some of the highlights that we had over the past 10 years was really getting to know each other and our communication within Whitney Houston. Um, we, great, we had a great bond and we had a lot of fun doing this and our teamwork was awesome. Um, our operations overall throughout the 10 years are really good. We stayed at an over 90% efficiency for the past six years with our operations. And we were really good with our segment watch, watching what tra uh, trends were changing and modifying our bikes in order to um, have the right specs and uh, please the customers. I also think that one of our best decisions was joining the racer segment when we did. We saw a need for a racer bike and that there wasn't a lot of people in that market. So we took over in that market and um, we had a lot of success. I also think that buying Team Fire Orange was a good decision and we had a lot of fun with them. We really liked working with them um, and they increased our shareholder value which was our goal overall when investing in them. Some of the lowlights of the past 10 years was definitely our loan to Team Fire Orange in order to purchase Kiebertzella. I think that was the biggest surprise was how much that impacted our shareholder value and also um, <coughs> Yeah, I think looking back, we just wouldn't have done that in the first place at all. Uh, we could have put a lot of time into thinking about that, and we made it more of an impulse decision. And uh, our communication across teams, which they mentioned a little bit, it started off a little bit rocky with our communication with um, Team Fire Orange, which we learned a lot from. And then that kind of played into Keybrickzilla communication, which also wasn't great. So I think looking back, we would have uh, realize how important that is, especially right off the get-go. 
Um, looking into the future, uh, like I said, we would change <coughs> those things, but uh, we did pretty good overall. I think we would pay off our debt, and once we receive that loan back from Team Fire Orange, then it will be a little bit easier to pay off our debt and work on our debt to equity, equity ratio a lot more. Um, I think we're going to try and look into some new segments and see if we can't raise our own personal shareholder value without relying on anybody else. And along with that independence and that independence movement that we want to take, there's um, a good chance in the next five years that we will sell Team Fire Orange. We were doing really well before we started investing in all of these other teams and um, I think we want to take that independence back and start working on ourselves. And so, yes, we want to sell Team Fire Orange. Um, like I said, overall, I think we did pretty good. Over 10 years, we had lots of ups and downs, but we learned a lot about communication and about thinking through our decisions more thoroughly. Um, so now I'm going to pass it over to Wyatt and Garrett, who are our other associates, to answer any questions that you want. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Uh, what sort of benefit did you guys think you were going to gain from purchasing Kevin's <laughs> Well, our first thoughts were we become quite, our, our team as well as Team Fire Orange had become quite stagnant over the past, what rollover was that, 20, uh, 2025? So the last three rollovers, so the last three years prior to that, we were pretty stagnant with profits, our cash flow. Our revenue was around the same, it was around 47 mil each year. So we were hoping by shaking things up and making a uh, big decision and giving Team Fire Orange a $90 million loan that we would in return see some more cash flows. So that was that was the hope. And clearly it didn't pay out as well as we thought it was. It was not personal. Of course. Do you guys know how much Fire Orange is worth right now if you were to try and sell them? It's around $76 million, which would help our cash flows much. Yeah. <laughs> what did you pay for them? We paid $32 million. So that's 50% return, 100% return. Yeah. Over four years, 25 a year, that's mighty fine. And there was, there was thought to sell them uh, before the last three rollovers. Uh, however, we were looking at their economic value that they brought us. And Okay, I'm going to jump in there. Um, do you know what economic value is? It's a new measure in finance. So don't get tripped up on this one, because I'm wondering if maybe you did. Can, you, can anybody help me out? Economic value is when your investors look at your company and they say, this, we'll choose a number uh, out of a hat. <coughs> we expect $100 of economic value created. And then what they do is they go, is your economic value higher than that or lower than that? If you only produce $85 of economic value, why then they would say we should not invest or we should sell you. If, they, if you produce $110, why they would say we should sell you. So when you're looking for um, Orange to increase your economic value, the only real benefit you would have got is that people might have been more interested in buying you, but it would not influence um, necessarily directly your stock price or in this simulation your shareholder value. Okay, and It's just something to keep in mind as, as a measurement tool um, that people use for assessing organizations. It's a fairly new measure. It's not 100% clear how good it is. I'm not trying to jump down your throat here. When I say that, it's just I, I, I want to make sure you guys don't stumble on this as you move forward in your jobs and stuff. So did I shut down the conversation completely now? <laughs> well, that is where we messed up, too, because we didn't recognize exactly what that was, and that's what, in the end, drove us and Team Farrowage down. Yeah, it's not explained the best in the in the um, manual. The problem is, is I know what it means, so I don't, there's so many things to explain, I don't know which one to choose. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, anyway, sorry, didn't mean to jump in and cut down the conversation, just a, an aside. Are there any other questions? What 
Are there any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys just took, went into your long-term debt with that, right? Yes, yes we did. Um, what was the interest on that loan? 19.4%. percent The bank of Visa. Handled, we've, we've handled losses, we've handled gains. We know, how to, we know how to deal with defeat, we know how to get back on that horse and keep going. And as our investors, we appreciate your continued investment support into our firm when you used it. And I think that's going to conclude our presentation. Thank you. Well, ex except I do have a I do have a question for you. Um, so so, and I think you sort of answered this one already. You really didn't do hard math on what it would mean for Orange to buy Cabardzella, right? You, it sort of was a late night decision where you went, okay, let's just do this. Let's do something. Let's shake up some stuff and just move forward. You didn't do the hard cr number crunching. And, and I'm not slagging you for this, but it's true, right? We did a few numbers. We thought it'd be a good, good move, but also we were like, that's what our company is. That's what our brand is. Our brand is to be bold. And that's one of the most bold things we could have done. So that's why we did it. That's pretty the new bold. world wasn't founded by taking small steps. It was taken by sending ships across an ocean we never crossed before, and that's what we decided to do with Team Winnie Reese. So are you guys from the United States Capital or something? <laughs> but I do have to ask you another hard question. Um, you do know, and again, don't be embarrassed if the answer is no, we didn't know, you do know that you can charge interest for a loan that you give your company, Team yes, Orange. Yes. But we, um, we, sorry. Did you, you chose not to? We chose not to. Because? because? We, felt, we felt Team Fire Orange was less of an owned firm and more of a partner. We felt that our teams worked together and we decided against loaning that, or providing interest because we knew they'd already have a little bit of trouble paying back that debt, let alone any accumulated interest. So let me just throw this out as a thought. Um, let's say you would have charged them 10%, which is half of what you guys borrowed the money for and split the difference with them. They carry half the um, um, interest, you guys carry half the interest. Do you think that would have made any difference, um, any major difference in your ability to perform well? Certainly. Okay. And even in a fair, agreed-to partnership, do you feel that that would have been inappropriate? No, not inappropriate. We just, uh, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty. Of course, right? And I can right? say it for a third time: we know how to handle the feet, we know how to get back on that horse, and we learn from our mistakes. And you know, our office was closed during the Thanksgiving break. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear. <laughs> cool. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you.